Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. It's Marisa. How are you? So today, I don't think I have ever done a video like this, like a full video, where I had answered a question from, you know, a comment um, on my channel. So I got a question. Uh, the channel name is Fiji Joe Art or Arts. And basically, they asked about maintenance of the um, paintings that I do, you know, kind of like, I guess, after they're hung, because it is fluid art, like, I guess, the drying process, um, updates on, like, after I poured, what happens afterwards, and, you know, is there any maintenance that has to be done? Meaning like putting more layers on top to keep it the same. So the answers to that is it, they're mixed. So basically um, there is really nothing, like after they're dry, there's nothing you have to do to maintain what's already there. Unless you just want to kind of, if you don't like it, you want to pour over it. That's something different. But once something's dry, um, you hang it. You know, you could resin it, uh, make it a nice sh uh, shiny coat. Um, you know, you could put gloss finish on it. You know, stuff like that. You could put, you know, glazes on it. Um, I have an example of that over there. Uh, I, don't, I don't really care for it that much. But anyway, um... Yeah, but I am also going to show what can happen, like, after it dries, there is, while the, it's in the drying process, there are chemical reactions. So, you know, with the paint, any paint, you know, it could be this paint, it doesn't make a difference, it could be, well, it may make a difference to, depending on the type of paint you use, the thickness, a lot goes into it. I know that pouring and fluid art may look like incredibly easy and simple, but there's a lot of uh, preparation that goes into it. And also a lot of things can affect, you know, in the drying process. So honestly, you know, with, um, let this focus, there you go. So basically, it does depend on the type of paint you use. It could be thicker paint, thinner paint. You know, this serum coat is different from um, Arteza paint. It, it just is. You know, this is thicker, to about heavy body, light body, whatever. Okay, so... Um, yeah, so it depends. It also depends on what type of pouring medium you use, the effects it has on your paint as well. If your paint's too thin, I have had that happen to me. I was trying to do a video. This was back, you know, quite a few months ago when I first started this channel. I didn't even post the video. It was horrifying. My paint was too thin. It was sliding all over the place. Um, actually, that happened to me with the apple barrel um if you don't know how i feel about <laughs> apple barrel i'm gonna link um my playlist of the battle of the pori means i just have three videos but that apple barrel right there is mm -mm, i'm not feeling it at all and that's why i like doing the um battle of the pori mediums because it actually shows me you know the mediums i want to keep using it also could tell all you guys out there who may just be starting out uh, doing fluid art or any other type of art where you use a medium, um, which ones to use, which ones maybe you shouldn't waste your money on, to be quite honest. Again, I don't know if that was just a bottle I had gotten, uh, but I actually had it in my Amazon card again. I'm like, you know what? I don't want to be stuck with another bottle of it because I was thinking maybe it's just the bottle I got. Um, but I really didn't like it. But I'm glad that I bought it. I'm glad that I tried it out and that I know I'm not going to waste my money on it again. That's it, you know. But so when you add these all these different products to a painting, it changes the nature of the paint. 
So if you put too much uh, fluid, um, fluid, <laughs> excuse me, if you put too much medium in, it's going to make it too fluid. If you don't put enough, it's going to make it too thick and your paint is not going to move around the way you want. And you learn that, honestly, by trial and error. Um, a lot of times there are uh, other channels. Maybe I'll figure that out for myself. Um, they do give like ratios to like 50-50, meaning like 50% paint, 50% uh, pouring medium. Um, again, for me, it depends on the type of paint you're using. If you're using craft paint, um, that may not work. You know, if you're using the serum coat, that may not work. So, and the Arteza, uh, and I'm going to show you how I screwed up. The Arteza, it's a pouring paint already. You don't need water and you don't need a uh, pouring medium. It's, it makes it too fluid. So it, a lot of it is experimentation. And that's really what I love about this is because... Like I had said in other videos, it combines my two loves, which is art and science. Because you really are mixing chemicals together. They're not necessarily hazardous chemicals. Um, you know, some people like to wear gloves. I get that. Um, I usually don't wear gloves, but I've never been hurt by any of this paint. Or I never, personally, I've never had a reaction on my hands. Some people are more sensitive, you know. Some people have to wear masks because any fumes. I don't smell any fumes of any of these um, materials myself. But some people are more sensitive. So, you know what? Please do what you have to do to protect yourself. So, yeah. So, the, a lot of things can, um, you know, interact with the paint and changes the nature of the paint. Okay, and that's really by trial and error. That's that part of it, okay? So, regardless of what paint, uh, pouring medium you use, regardless of what um, paint you use, let's say you get it to, con to the consistency that you need it to be in order for your paint to be fluid enough to move around the canvas in the way in, the way in which you want it to move, okay? Um, a lot of things can happen, all right? Now, I'm going to start off with a good, <laughs> and I'm going to end off with the really, eh, yeah, it's bad. I'm kind of annoyed at what, I made a big mistake. But anyway, but some of the quote-unquote mistakes I made, or just the way the pouring medium reacted to the paint, the result was still good. So even though I made the original idea I had didn't work out, I'm very open to if you want to call it happy mistakes, whatever, the result was still, to me, uh, good. So let's start off with the good good. All right. So this is, these are from my video of um, the Makeup Inspired um, paintings. And it was the uh, uh, Jeffree Star and Shane Dawson uh, Mini Controversy palette. I will link that video here. Uh, this is Jeffrey, and that's Shane. Okay, I'm gonna just bring the camera up a little bit. So I had no issues with the way this dried whatsoever. Okay, I love them both. They both dried perfectly to me. I use actually a lot of iridescent medium as well to kind of give that that sheen that metallic look that makeup has that was my idea behind it i'll link those videos there okay that's jeffrey and that is shane um and me personally if there is texture <clears throat> in paintings a lot of people don't like it they want it a very smooth finish and sometimes i like that too i don't necessarily mind um texture in my paintings like i said before Sometimes I think it makes the painting look more interesting to me. That's like what I like in my art, you know. Uh, some people don't like that. A little texture in there, but uh, all in all, these dried, you know, great. It's the way I like them. It's the way it came out. They didn't really shift around too much after. And that's another thing. During the drying process, you do have, um, you know, if you don't run off when you're tilting the canvas... 
to move around the paint if you don't uh, run off enough paint there can be cracks and stuff also <coughs> excuse me also temperature if it's too cold in the room if it's too hot in the room there's a lot of things that could happen you know during the drying process where it can make cracks and bubbles um, and that's why also with the bubbles the air bubbles um, you know I use my uh, butane torch I'll get that this little guy here to get out any air bubbles okay so this is an example of how they dried you know the way I left it um, is pretty much it sometimes the what, I, what you're gonna see in a few minutes is sometimes the um, the paint still spreads uh, if you use silicone um, definitely more reactions happen because the silicone uh, creates these like cells here and it breaks apart the paint to give you these cool effects okay so that's another thing that affects um, and there could be reactions way after you know the pour is finished and I'm done tilting I said I'm done and the painting could sit there for a while and still do stuff on its own it still reacts the, the paint breaks apart and not in a bad way it just gives you really cool um, textures and effects you know and that's sometimes what you want in a painting what you want in a fluid art um, pour painting okay you want those cool effects all right sometimes you just want the smoothness of the lines it depends on what you want but um you know what i need to do i need to like time like on my own time um like after i do a pour and see how long it takes to kind of stop reacting and moving around i think that would be kind of interesting a little experiment for me to do and i could come back to you guys with the results all right so let's move on Hi, Shane and Jeffrey. We are moving you over here. So this one here, okay, this is also my other video from the makeup inspired um, uh, fluid art. Now, I like it, but uh, you know, there were, see this section here? That's some texture. So these are, this is the one where it's like, okay, I wasn't expecting it, but I still like it. Okay, it's an unexpected. I don't love this, like, part here, that texture. Um, but I don't hate it either. Okay, I still love the painting. Um, it doesn't bother me that much. I don't mind, like, the black kind of coming through. Um, in that area, but some people are like, oh man, it's ruined. Um, for me, it's not ruined. I still love it. Um, and the real and the reason why that probably happened um, is because I used a glaze in the mixture. I just wanted to see what would happen. Again, this I like to experiment. I still love it. Um, it is like thicker. See that the black is much thinner here. Um, this is definitely thicker, so it looks like it lays on top of the black, and I actually like that. Uh, this is the only part where I'm not 100% loving it, this little section, but it's not ruining the whole painting for me, you know? I still love it. I really do, um, as a whole. Alright, so that's an example of, um, you know, it's like things happen in the drying process, uh, the way I mix my paint, I used a glaze. It's thicker. It was probably too thick, so that's what happened, and that's okay. You know, I guess I still like this. All right. So basically, you don't need to maintain anything um, afterwards. You know, you could resin it. Um, I never did the second coat of the res the one resin part uh, painting I did, but um, I'll show you that in a second if I can get to it. So this is an example. These two are from my um, Battle of the Pouring Mediums. Uh, I have a playlist as well. I think there's like three videos so far. And I'm going to keep doing those as I find new um, pouring mediums. And I, for, oh yeah, this one I think was the, yeah, this one was the triart, and this one was the deco art. Okay, so this, 
these between and I put them together too. There's the deco art and the tri art together. Okay. So yeah, this is the tri art, this is the deco art. And I wanted to kind of look like little flowers, like a little kind of quote unquote abstracted flower. So what happened here was that even though I love them both, I really do. Equally, I love them both, except this one, like I said in the in that video, if you want to look at it, the tri art kept the color. So these are more these are more true to the colors that I use. Whereas this definitely uh, the deco art changed the color of the paint. So that you guys know that, you know, you will be aware of it. So when you use it, you'll know that you're not gonna get the true color. Okay. Um, but I love them both. And what happened in both of them was that um, there was a lot of uh, chemical reaction and a lot of it shifted. And especially in this one, even though I love it, this whole section here was in the center. And within the hour, I'm going to say 30 minutes to an hour, I looked back at it. And again, I don't know exactly how long because I like, you know, left it, left it alone, let it to dry. And basically after I do a painting, I do leave it on this rack or another kind of rack or on cups or something so it doesn't stick to my mat or a table. Um, it is elevated and I just let it dry. And I don't really touch it again until quite a many, many hours, like next day. I give it a good 24 hours to dry, about that. Um, yeah, but this whole thing here, this little section was in the middle, like a quote unquote, like abstracted flower. And after an hour, it shifted. All the paint kept on dripping. And it shifted. Um, yeah. And I wasn't 100% happy. But in the end, you know, that was the only part I didn't like because I really loved the way it looked at first after I poured it. And unfortunately it it changed to, in a way that i didn't 100 percent like um again i still love the painting i am happy with it but that one section you know it it bothered me at first um and the same one with this one i wasn't yeah i was going for the same idea but very quickly um it definitely was moving around too much and that's the effect it had. But again, I love both of them, even though the paint shifted, the interaction with the pouring mediums. Again, this is the deco art pouring medium, and that is the tri art. It did different things. This one actually retained the line a little better as well, except of that shifting. This one was much more fluid. Um, I still love it, but um, you know, so that's like an example of how things can change and but it's like there it's like happy accidents i still love where they both came out and i'm actually giving these to one of my very good friends mom for christmas i'm actually giving her both of them all right and so <laughs> here we come to a uh, major screw up all right of mine now yesterday i posted a video uh, let me get them give me one second put them on the light here and i was making christmas cards for friends and family right and the pour when i poured it i loved it i loved it oh my god look what happened okay and this is all my fault and i was like what the heck happened what why did this happen i know like certain things happen there could be a few cracks and this this and that but wow what did i do and what i did was okay i used what is this this is it this is um artists loft the acrylic flow and it has flow troll and it has water in it and what did I say to all you guys that I didn't do my damn self? No water and no pouring medium. In the Arteza, uh, let me get them, one sec. These guys, okay? The pouring acrylics by Arteza do not 
use water and you don't need a pouring medium. I said that to you guys to tell you and what did I do? I coated my canvas, I primed it with that stinking white paint and I ruined these paintings. Absolutely ruined them. They were gorgeous. You, you, if you saw the video, you know what I'm talking about. I was swooning over my own freaking artwork. What are, you know, are the colors of the paint? I was going insane. What did I do? I literally ruined everything. With these, I'm like, I'm really deliberating if I want to like just chuck them. Um, you know, I, there was a lot of silicone, so it's very shiny. That's the shine you see. It actually has residue. Um, but that I don't mind. I actually kind of like that. Um, but look at all the cracks. It was, it's totally ruined. And. You know, I don't mind showing you this. Like, okay, this is my screw up. Because if you don't follow directions, okay, this is what can happen. A beautiful painting can be ruined. I mean, this is disgusting. It went from looking amazing and awesome, oh my God, to this. Horrible, horrible. So I didn't follow my own directions. I didn't follow the directions of the company, of the paint. This is what happened. I may just chuck these. These were a dollar each. Or, I don't know. I may, I don't really don't want to pour over them, I'll be honest with you. Because um, I may still get the same, I don't mind texture, but I still may get the same texture. I don't know if like pouring over them is actually going to do anything. Um, then I'm going to have to kind of wash down all the silicone off. I don't know if it's like worth it. I mean, some of it is kind of cool still, but all in all, I'm very disappointed uh, in myself, uh, you know. And um, yeah, I mean, but things happen, okay? So this is what could happen when you don't follow directions. Now, to maintain anything, you don't need to do anything to maintain this like this this guy at least is always going to stay this way nothing's going to happen nothing it's dry now the, the any chemical reaction um that happened already happened and it's dry like that this as horrible as it is um it's always going to stay like like this now it's going to stay like this okay um yeah but yeah i'm i was considering just kind of working with it uh, it is what it is um either chucking them or um i was thinking of just like you know buying some pretty ribbon and still kind of working with it you know put some ribbon around a little christmas uh you know like little decorations on it i don't know i may just start over um yeah you know just continue on buying a, a few more and just starting over, and this time listening to my own advice. Okay? <laughs> but yeah, I wanted to share that with you because we all make mistakes and things happen. Um, also, like, let's say I didn't use that paint. You know, it could have been freezing cold in the room, it could have been too hot. I think the cold does more damage than the heat, uh, especially with resin. Uh, I believe if it's actually, if it's too cold, um, it, you know. It, it, either way, I think with resin, um, any extreme temperatures is not good for resin uh, as far as the drying process and even like mixing it up. If it's too cold, it's not going to mix. And yeah, so, um, but I'm not, I am no expert on resin whatsoever. I would say at this point in my life, as far as paint is concerned, I, I, I know what I'm talking about. But resin, I'm not speaking on that much because I'm, you know, I've used it once, and I love the way it looks. I'm going to experiment more with it, but I am no expert. But anyway, I just want to show this to you guys. Um, I think this was important, you know, to um, talk about, about how these dried, what do I feel about them. Uh, yeah, what I feel about these is, you know, <laughs> okay. But all these guys, I'm happy with, you know, um, whether or not they, my original idea worked or not, uh, it's okay. 
um, that's what happens in fluid art sometimes like I said you can have all the control you want you can make all the choices and things still happen but that's in a way I love that word like fluid art is because you have to kind of let go and just let things happen and accept it or not accept it you know um, but I try to be accepting of the results now and I think uh, it makes me much more happy in my art in general all right so I will link a couple of these um, videos here if you're interested in watching and I think that's all for today I have talked oh my goodness for 25 minutes already that's crazy and guys so if you like this video please give me a thumbs up don't forget to subscribe to my channel and hit the notification bell so you never miss one of my videos and I will see you in the next time guys bye